Hi guys, this is Scribbly with another pen review and today we are going to have a look at another Caron Dash Pen. I've got this pen sent for review by the pen company in the UK. Thanks very much guys for sending me that pen for review. It's not all that long time ago that I have reviewed the latest sort of addition to Caron Dash's lineup, which was the 849 and the 849 being an aluminium pen that here being I don't actually know what kind of metal it is but it's palladium coated is a heavier more sturdy pen but compared to the 849 I don't have it around here it's actually the same form factor and I think it's the same thickness the same section diameter and all that um just as a guess, it's a very, very similarly modeled pen. As said, I don't have it, unfortunately, here to make a direct comparison, but I feel that section, length, and diameter, as well as that um, octagonal shape, I think it is, are pretty much exactly the same. The one that I'm having a look at right here is called the Ecridor, which is probably the most famous fountain pen or pen lineup of Caron Dash. The Ecridor does come in a couple of different finishes. The one that I am having right here and that you see here is the so-called retro finish. There are different ones, the chevron with arrows, there's one with dots and stuff like you can look it up on the Caron Dash website or on the website of um, the pen company where that pen here costs 145 pounds, which is a really good price for that pen, I believe. As said, the finish that I'm reviewing here is the so-called retro. Um, and by the way, I don't know why, but um, when I did my in advance research, I found that there's almost no review out of the Caron Dash Ecridor for it being such an iconic fountain pen and a fountain pen that's been around for a quite long time, I didn't really have an explanation why that would be. Anyway, now Scrivelli is here to save you and bring you a review of that Ecridor. Coming in this very beautiful, quite large red box saying Caron d'Ache Genève. You then get a sticker here on the side, of course, Caron d'Ache a manufacturer in Switzerland. I don't know what that number is, probably on the serial number, maybe a product number or something like that. Says Ecridor Plume Retro, um, retro fountain pen, the fountain pen with a retro finish. Ecridor, the model PD for the palladium coating. I don't think the whole pen is made of palladium, but I could be wrong. The coating surely is palladium. Says M for medium here, which is not entirely true because I have it with a fine nib. Be it as it is, we slide that out here and out comes a black box that does not look fox leather or something like that. That really looks plasticky, but it does look cheap. Looks really nice, quite minimalist, quite elegant. We open up the box like that. Now that here looks like fox leather, which it is. It says Caron Dash Genève in silver inside. Very nice Caron Dash logo here. A little red thingy here reflecting of course the red of the company colors. You take that pen bed out, you get a very nice, very very nice, that's probably one of the nicest booklets that I've ever seen. That's almost like a small book, right, with, and it's even in color print, with, you know, what does it have here? You see the contents, you can read it for yourself talks about the materials and the quality and how you can fill the pen and the different ink colors they have and then all that blah blah and then in the end uh, you have the international warranty and all that that's not uh, all that interesting probably you get that is now more interesting ink cartridges I guess the two of them yep color is blue Idyllic blue ink cartridges, very nice. Pen does also come with a converter, also nice. Takes, as you can see, um, I think it's the standard international format, if I'm not entirely mistaken. mistaken. It is. So, the pen itself, very, very iconic as said. That um, 
octagonal shape i think it is i always mix up octagonal and hexagonal because i don't count the sides uh in advance you may if i mixed it up again excuse it you know what i mean at least it's that iconic shape right it's a quite short pen that we have here it's not the thickest and longest pens on earth we'll do a side size comparison in a bit and then we have those two oh, what can i call them end thingies here that sort of resemble each other a little bit on the top of the cap we do have the carondash logo around that top cap thing here it says swiss made here and then Caron Dash. We have, of course, that retro finish here on the cap that with any other finish like the Chevron and so on would then look, of course, differently. You have a small reflective side here. Um, yeah, it's probably not the most elegant solution, but um, Caron Dash spares that here from covering it with the finish because that is, if you want to have, the, if you want to have the pen engraved, this is where the engraving will happen. Um, I don't know if most people do engrave their pens. I actually don't like engraved pens personally very much. And in that case, that now just looks not silly, but it's just a pity. I would have loved that finish to extend all the way up onto the cap and all that. We then have a very beautiful clip here. That is a very iconic. It looks sort of... I don't know. I mean, like, of course, the finish is called retro, but I mean, I find the whole pen does look slightly vintagey. Don't ask me now to define what vintagey is to me and why I find it looks vintagey. It just does look like that to me. And the clip certainly plays its role in that it's a very beautiful clip. Flares out down here, quite springy, not too tight, not too loose, perfectly usable. Um, we then have that cap here, and that is one thing. Uh, I wanted to point it out when I uncapped the pen, but now that we're at it, I'll point it out right here. That cap, I mean, it's not loose at all. There's a really, a very satisfying clip, click to it. You really have to push it on. It doesn't come off, no chance. That's really not gonna happen. I really have to um, sort of pull that thing quite hard, but it does rotate here, and I don't know. First of all, of course, it means that that won't always align, which um, yeah, to uh, slight perfectionists like me at times is a little bit disturbing, but then also it rotates and I don't know, I, I would just find it nice if there could be some kind of a mechanism or whatever so that that thing doesn't rotate because that actually does disturb me a little bit. It's not a deal breaker if you really like the design of the pen, but I find it quite disturbing, uh, quite honestly. Um, yeah, then we have that palladium coated body all the way up down there does pick up fingerprints quite a bit. If that is something that really disturbs you, that may not be the pen for you. But then again, you also have like uh, this pattern finish here, which sort of, of course, makes the fingerprints less obvious than if it would be a highly polished pen uh, as the sides here are polished because they are not covered by that, by that finish. And then we have like a end thing here, which can be used to very safely and very securely post the pen. It does become, become quite long and a bit unwieldy when posted. It also becomes a bit top heavy because that metal cap actually is pretty heavy. So I personally do like to write that pen unposted. It looks very, very nice in hand, is a perfect length. As said, we have a push on cap um, that has mm, no inner cap as far as I can see but I never had quite honestly a problem with picking that pen up and that it would run dry on me never had an issue with that so maybe no inner cap needed in that case we then have like a quite large step down onto the section and we then have a uh, a very, very, very narrow section. Uh, that section, as said, I think is probably the same than the one of the 849. And if you like slim pens, um, such as the Diplomat Traveler, for instance, um, or something like that, then that really may be the pen for you. If you like beefy or girthy pens, 
then that pen may unfortunately not really be for you because as said, it's a quite slim pen. I mean, there's a couple of options. I mean, as already pointed out with the review of the 849, while it's slim and I normally like thicker or girthier pens, it actually doesn't disturb me that much, which I find a weird surprise because I would think that that really disturbs me, the thin section. It doesn't that much, but well, it is a bit thin. Um, you can even hold the pen up here where that quite large step down comes onto the section, which I, again, okay, it's slightly rounded here, but still I, I would have thought that that may be uncomfortable. For some reason it isn't. So having that said, you do of course have the option to just hold the pen a little bit up here or even slightly higher onto the barrel, which I then find a little bit weird because like I have a quite large distance from nib or paper to my hand. I like the distance to be quite a bit shorter here, but it would be an option for you to hold the pen slightly higher in case the section would be too slim for you. As said, you got my point. It's a slim section. Um, let me see if I actually have something here to compare it. Here we have a Stabilo 0.88. Most people will be sort of familiar with that pen. And you see that even a Stabilo 0.88, which is basically the diameter of a regular pencil, sort of is even thicker than the slimmest part of the section of that Caron Dash. So as said, and I will now stop talking about that section, it's a slim section. A very beautiful number five nib that we have here says, F for fine, Caron Dash logo on here, extremely beautiful scroll work. I do enjoy that an awful lot. This is a steel nib, plastic feet down here. That's what the nib looks like. And it's extremely smooth, I gotta say that. This is probably one of the smoothest steel nibs together with the Diplomat steel nibs, who are also exceptionally smooth and Faber-Castell nibs. Um, this is probably one of the smoothest steel nibs that I have ever used. We then unscrew the barrel, small rubber o-ring here for a smooth operation and tight closure. Swiss made, Caron Dash Swiss made, it says here, of course, the standard international converter and a Caron Dash. Um, branded converter in here. Looks a little bit like a Schmidt converter. Probably Schmidt makes it for them. I don't know. Don't want to speculate about that too much. But that's what we have here. Let's do a size comparison to my standard size reference pen, Alami Safari. And I think it's safe to say that the Caron Dash Ecridor is a wee bit shorter than that Lamy Safari when we uncap it. It's also a little bit shorter. And then as said, of course, the section is quite thin, just to point it out again. And here you see the nib in comparison to a Lamy nib. Another thing, uh, which is now of course also detail, but well, the pen costs uh, 145 pounds. So it's not exactly inexpensive. It's also not a super expensive pen, of course, but Caron Dash, you know, Swiss, Swiss precision and all that. If I have a pen with that, barrel shape and I put the pen down like that, I would like the nib to align, right? I don't know if you, and it clearly doesn't. Um, um, it's of course not a deal breaker again. I don't know if you could maybe somehow ensure that this will that that will happen by making the threads in a certain way. I don't know, I'm not a whatever engineer, but I just think that it would be nice for a Swiss precision pen to, you know, when it lays on the side, just have the nib aligned like that, flat with the surface. And then of course, I would also like this here not to happen. I've rambled about that enough now. Let's hop into a writing sample with this otherwise really decently priced pen, 145 bucks for such an iconic pen. And it's a really beautiful pen and it's like a super build quality is of course all right. 
I think, in my opinion at least. Well, it's just a steel nib, but it's a very nice steel nib. It's a very smooth steel nib, a very pleasant writing experience. Came up straight away here, by the way. And we're going here with a... Come on. Dash. Picridor. Like that. Um, in the retro finish. Very, very smooth writing experience with a tad of feedback. This is a fine nib. Uh, this fine nib here is definitely on the wider side of things. I would, no, well, it's not a European medium, but it comes quite close to medium. So it's it's definitely not a really, really fine nib. And um, it's inked, by the way, with uh, Graf von Faber Castell Deep Sea Green, which I find a fantastic ink. Um, it's a pretty wet writer. I, I wouldn't say it's a gusher, but it's pretty close to a gusher actually. This is definitely one of the wettest pens that I had in hand so, hand so far, which if you enjoy wet nips, it's I don't enjoy overly wet nips all that much because I mean I'm also a lefty and like I don't like too much ink on the page. But if you like that, um, of course you see a lot of the ink, color and shading and all that, then that may really be a pen for you as well. It doesn't disturb me, just wanted to point that out. It, as, it is actually a pretty wet nib. Smooth in all directions, with as said, a tad of feedback. A really, 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 really nice writing experience. So having that said, I think it's a super nice pen and uh, I hope the review of the Caron Dash Ecridor was useful to you. I want towards the end of the review again thank the pen company in the UK that has sent me this pen for review, for sending it to me for review and uh, I'll gladly see you guys later at the next review. Bye bye.